This video is brought to you by CKGSB, China's only not-for-profit independent business school. We see a lot of opportunity in this uh, new market and new being better eco-efficient and at the same time mostly coming from the emerging market. If we now go back to the classical definition of um, you know, the market size, China today is already the number one market for chemistry and chemicals and uh, so that is very important. But uh, for us, China is still only the third largest uh, market for BSF. Uh, so we still have some gap. <laughs> and uh, therefore, you know, we all have a, a, a very exciting challenge ahead of us. Yeah, the strategy sees that the, the market is the world. And you know, in today's globalization, that you know, uh, what is more important? China may be manufacturing a lot of things, ultimately shipped to whatever. So we have to see how can we sustain the growth of the world. Now, I think in the last decade or two, many people start addressing different GDP growth of different countries. But at the end of the day, it is the growth of the world. And it is the sustainability of whether the world can sustain such growth. Yeah? And if we now say generally the world growth economically, GDP-wise, about you know, 1 to 2%, let's say, for the world. Now, how can we address that? And where are these growth? Now, having said that, yes, we come back to where the reality is. China is... An, also together with many of the other emerging markets, will continue to be the key area where um, products are being made. So on that basis, it is very important to address the sustainability and the economic growth of emerging market. And where we believe this will be a challenge as well as an opportunity, if we can bring in the right technology, the right business model to address how can we ensure that these manufacturing growth is still done under a way where it, main, it, it helped to sustain the development of the world. I think one of the, the most uh, discussed topics, of course, is, uh, is, is carbon emission, which you know, many people now conclude is, a, is a, a key contributor for global warming. So if we don't address that, then we're not addressing sustainability of the world. Now, and if we have to address uh, emissions of carbon, then we would have to look into where are the industry that and, and, and segments that have uh, uh, been producing most uh, carbon dioxide, right? And and then we have to then go into and what can what can we do? What can technology do? What can our lifestyle be changing? You know, shall we be driving a smaller car than a large car? Shall we be driving a lighter car than a heavier car? And what kind of uh, you know expectation from the consumer market? And all of these kind of things uh, uh, will, will have to be both a, um, an industry uh, approach as well as the society's understanding. If all of us as a consumer exercise our consumer power of choosing the most sustainable product, then I think uh, it's probably uh, much more um, conducive for the world to come together and say, OK, you know, we, we all are key influencer in the driving this uh, sustainable world. First of all, it's um, you know, seeing all this big thing and the whole trend is important and that is part of the basis for us to develop our strategy. But then you are absolutely right. I mean, how can we make it become, a, how can we make it a reality? So. In order to address it and to implement and execute our strategy, we would have to um, segment into different area where we put different priorities. I mean, we, we all work with limited resources. And one of the things that we would do uh, in, in, in Asia and, and particularly in China 
we organize ourselves in such a way that we present the solution from BSF as one company. We have many, many different products. We are the largest chemical company, but sometimes you know, we have many products that go into the same industry. But in the past, we say, well, but they are not going into the same purchaser, which is correct. We sell, for instance, product that goes into an automotive, <clears throat> into different aspects of the value chain. We sell direct product. Uh, we do uh, coating, uh, you know, uh, exterior coating of a car for most of these uh, brand car. Yeah, and uh, so people can see. But we also provide solutions and product to the first tier, second tier, third tier supplier, or of an OEM. And now what we do is that, yes, there are different people and different customer, but we try to organize ourselves. Say these is things that we go into, let's say automotive, and then we try to organize ourselves in such a way to say, well, what would the automotive industry need in the future? So we're trying to pull this demand rather than pushing it. And by pulling the demand, we will work with the society, we will work with the community. So people now expect maybe a more greener car. So then what we do? Then we don't only work with different uh, uh, tier supplier, but we work with the uh, particular uh, brand. And, uh, and, and then we say, okay, how can we conceptualize that um, at different stage, the car would need in order to fulfill better uh, eco efficiency. And as an example, <coughs> we work with Daimler uh, uh, on this smart car. I mean, you all know this little smart car, you know, small smart car. Smart car is already a concept of you know smaller car and uh, more environmental, the more less less uh, more fuel efficient and so on, and more convenient in the in the in the city. Now, in addition to that. We worked with Daimler and last end of last year in the Frankfurt uh, car show that this was uh, you know kind of presented and uh, and this uh, this this smart smart car is called smart for vision the the, the model is smart for vision yeah? and it have different different aspect of new innovation and it have to be you know really mind reaching uh, for the people who actually designed this car. And then demand for what the material have to be, and then put it all together, right? So it's not only on a one-on-one -on -one basis that we are now addressing. They are very important. Each of these people are our customers, very important. But over above that, we try to organize uh, these people together. So we try to be part of the automotive industry and just start think, talking to them, applying our chemistry knowledge to say, well, how can we help our customer to be more successful? No. So we start sitting down and think about what kind of sustainability solution. Now going back to the smart for vision, as an example, there are uh, solar cells at the roof which absorb you know, solar energy and it helps us to manage the electricity requirement within the car, you know, the lighting system and all this you know, air con and the whatsoever requirement. So it's, you don't need to use the fuel and the battery to manage your lighting. So you can actually do that. And we do, on top of many other, uh, you know, uh, already existing features of the smart car. So we also have things which, um, you know, it's a, it's a particular film that we put on the exterior of the window. So what happened is you would have uh, all this uh, ultra red uh, uh, wavelength and UV that goes through, you, you, you need the light from outside, but you don't need the heat, right? So it reflects the heat wavelength and it only takes the light, right? So by putting it in, people sitting in the car is more comfortable. You don't need so much aircon in a very hot uh, city, right? So that's also energy saving. But these are some of the things we're doing uh, with existing technology. Then people say, what about the future of automotive? Of course, we are also working very intensely with a lot of people that designed what is the future of technolo uh, technology. People now talks about uh, battery cars, you know, for instance. So uh, we have also last year put together uh, lithium battery type 
kind of business from bits and pieces, put it together as a strategic business unit. And uh, recently we have uh, acquired a, uh, a lithium battery uh, company globally, including also a manufacturing in China. And we also wanted to, when we acquire a company today, we wanted to apply our chemistry knowledge to whatever is the end industry and combine it. And we, there's so much in chemistry in the battery, right? Both the cathode and the anode and the membrane and uh, whatever the things, the ion that go exchange within the battery. Many, many chemistry where we can apply it. So what we like to do is using the top-notch technology, knowledge, know-how, research direction of BSF applying to an industry where we believe it's a growth industry. And battery, for instance, is going to be a, a vital part for electric car in the future. So we are also addressing electric car. But meanwhile, while electric, electric car is still not yet as popular, we already provide many other solutions. For instance, now we talk about you know, cars that have uh, emission. And, uh, and you know, sometimes you kind of say, wow, you know, all this PM 2.5 or whatever we talk about nowadays on the newspaper. We applied the technology that BSF has, uh, which is the leading in the world, for car emission catalysts. This catalyst primarily reduced to a large extent all these um, particles, uh, PM stuff, uh, and then it also um, make the unburned um, un, uh, fuel some of the emissions of uh, nitrous oxide, sulfur oxide, and whatnot, to reduce it into something which is less harmful, and also water. So we bring it up, and this is standard where we normally refer to as uh, Euro 3, Euro 4, and Euro 5. And in China, we also call it this Guo uh, San, Guo Si, Guo. This type of standard, and we are working actively. And so now, uh, at least we can say that we're happy to see that China is now addressing very seriously, and particularly in large city, you know, pushing uh, emission standard uh, from one level to the other, uh, and it goes into um, uh, private cars, into 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 trucks, into buses, and in the future, uh, we are also very much uh, working, and we would like to see China also putting more emphasis uh, on the implementations of the motorcycle. Uh, emission. We can claim and we, we feel happy that we're working very closely with the, uh, with the country like China. I think it's important when we define innovation that it is not only R&D, but, but they are of course very important. Huh? So first of all, we try to uh, really build that into the DNA as much as possible to across the business and say, well, you know, you don't need to be sitting in the lab to be innovator. Now, it could be, you know, how you address a particular business. But nevertheless, now, this is not an excuse. Now, we, we try to do that because it's a lot of relaying back into the market, into, you know, uh, the company. And that's also innovation. But nevertheless, addressing directly on the R&D area, uh, we are making a really a bold effort. Uh, we made a decision two years ago and uh, last year we started building, uh, we're going to uh, invest um, 5.5 million euro, so it's almost 55 million RMB, almost, or 50 million RMB, into uh, transforming one of our sites, currently in Pudong, into a Asia Pacific Innovation Center or campus. It is uh, composing um, laboratories, of course. Uh, it is now, the building is now almost complete. We are already planning for scientists. Uh, we expect that uh, when this building is ready, we will have, uh, over the period of next year, that we will have at least 450 scientists, I'm not talking about you know just workers, scientists working in this uh, R&D center. And, uh, but these are not just scientists where we collect from the street or something. These are very important uh, BSF existing uh, scientists, but at the same time, even two years ago, as anticipating for this project, we have recruited 
quite a number, you know, uh, of local PhD research candidate um, to send them to uh, work in in Germany in the research area. So these people, and when I travel to uh, our headquarters, I also meet them, no? and they are also feeling very, very excited that they are now working together with our scientists in the, in Germany. So when this campus is ready, they will come back, and they will be a core, uh, you know, part of our, our, our scientists. And of course, uh, we will also bring in other people, you know, not only from Germany but also from around the world. Uh, we will also try to uh, recruit some uh, scientists from across Asia Pacific. We want this to be a base where it is very internationalized because research, yes, it's very important. We work in China and in the emerging market for the emerging market, but a lot of the know how, a lot of the, re the uh, research, you cannot just lock yourself in a room and isolate it and you are in research. Research is a very international kind of, I mean, like academic, you know, you cannot just learn by your own library, you know, you have to work with many other people, collaboration and so on. So our research center will be uh, a network for the whole BSF. This is not just a China matter. This is a whole part of BSF where we do the research. So uh, once again, we're very, very excited that this will come. And meanwhile, we're already talking about phase two. <laughs> So phase two of the uh, the campus and the R and D center, thereby then we will be investing more, and there will be more people working on, and uh, and we uh, certainly have high expectation that we will be not only addressing uh, what we currently are addressing, but we will be addressing uh, perhaps more faster to to the market, and uh, really uh, developing solution that is required by uh, the emerging market. I, I, I think this is a very good question. Um, I believe the most important uh, factor is um, there are certain situations you have to be very global, like global standard, safety standard. There are certain aspects it have to be very local, like understanding China's uh, situation, development, emphasis, and so on. And we have to make it all together and it shall be maintained so that there are uh, harmony and less conflict, but yet very important to, to generate a win-win situation. A win-win for the company, the win-win for obviously development of China, but very important, win-win for the people. <laughs> because everything we do, we create a footprint. And we want to make sure that nobody, nobody will be disadvantage. There should be always um, a common value where we can uh, all, let's say, contribute to. And I think to generate this common value and then it become a shared value, I think this is basically what we uh, would like to strive for. <laughs>